Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Puppeteer Full Tutorial Series for Absolute Beginners. In today's episode, I'm going to show you two basic operations that are often required when you're writing automation tests. Or even for that matter, when you're doing web scrapping, you would be required to go back and forth between the pages to get the information or the elements. That's what we are going to learn in today's episode. This is part 23 of the series. If you have missed out on the first 22 parts, I have covered everything from ground zero to advanced use cases in terms of complete web scrapping, automating your tests and much more. Make sure that you go through all the previous episodes in order to learn and master Puppeteer with me. Today we are learning how to navigate back and forth between the browser pages. For that, the important methods that you will learn are puppeteer.launch, browser.newpage, page.evaluate, page.goback, page.goforward. These are the methods we will use today to implement the back and forth functionality. Without wasting time, let's jump right into code. Alright, so I'm going to create the new file here and call it episode23.js. So all right, so let's start writing. So first, we will need a Puppeteer instance. So let's import that and say require Puppeteer. Once you have imported, I'm increasing the font size. All right, I hope you can see it better now. All right, so I have the Puppeteer, which I have imported. And I'm going to start writing async method. Again, you can do this in multiple ways. Uh, you can write a method and then call it that is also fine all right so what i'm going to do is just implement the asic function here and say const let's create a browser instance first and say await and for that we will use the puppeteer dot launch option now this we can pass different options like headless true or false since we want to see the output I'm putting it as false by default it is true now I'm creating a new page using the browser instance new page so once we have the page uh, then we will tell it to go to a certain URL right so we'll say page dot now you can use the so see you, you're not seeing that right so the moment you don't see something autocomplete that means we have done something wrong okay so go to that's the URL that we want to send so let's send it to HTTP example.com right now this will open up this particular URL which is example.com now let's wait for the page to load so I'm going to throw in a, a wait wait till timeout wait for timeout right that's the wait for time okay so that is deprecated right so that method is deprecated so I'm not going to use it anyway it's going it's an await so it will wait now I'm saying await page dot go back so what I'm saying is go back now right now what you can do instead is you can click I'm going to show you in the browser and will open yahoo.com and you can see there are different options that we can click so we can say go to from yahoo.com you can go to finance.yahoo.com so first go to finance uh, yahoo.com and then we can say await page dot go to right or you can write a click method that's also fine I'm going to just use finance.yahoo.com so it will redirect it now to finance.yahoo.com and then we will again say dot go back so this way it will now go back to yahoo.com right because we are sending back again now again you can wait for certain do's do some operations here right like extracting page title etc etc right you can extract that and you can assign it somewhere and console log basically you can do the entire web scrapping here and once you have done that we can tell it to go forward that means from yahoo.com again go to finance.yahoo.com right so those are the two important methods that we are using 
finally we can just close the browser dot close right now you can set a timeout and wait for few seconds etc right so that's fine but I'm not doing that so let's see this in action now episode hyphen 23 dot JS that's how you'll run it you'll write node space file name dot JS let's run, launch it it won't run because we haven't called it right so how do you call it so we can do a direct initiation of it and for that I'm just going to throw in like a method so now it will execute it the moment we run this file let's wait in the meanwhile hit that like button and subscribe button so we are at yahoo.com the page loaded it went to finance.com back to yahoo.com it will extract the page wait till it loads then send it back to finance.com so see and it closed right so it has extracted the basic title that we want so ideally what we are learning here is the important methods which is go back and go forward using these methods we can navigate between the page URLs back and forth one of the classic use cases where when you're trying to automate end-to-end -end test scenarios you might want to go back say let's go to dashboard verify data then go back to edit screen and much more right again in some places you don't want the user to go back so you can write that logic also when he goes back right so there are different variations of how we can implement that but the basic essence is using these methods that I've listed here I hope it's clear and I hope um, you will be able to now implement in your projects of how to navigate back and forth that's it uh, for today in the next episode I'm going to show you how to do fake geolocation using puppeteer oftentimes when you're building a complex enterprise applications you will be required to share your geolocation because you might want to show some matching or relevant data to that particular location using puppeteer we can fake that geolocation in order to simulate the latitude and longitude values that's what I'm going to show you in the next episode thank you so much for joining in this episode I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.